This is Black Views, bringing you the Black News. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Today our subject is going to be about crime in the black communities. So, if you haven't been paying attention lately, there's been a, a rash of crime. I'll say crime that has been reported. Um, the news media has taken this opportunity. Uh, elections are coming up, and they want to be able to hire new police officers, beef up the police. So at this time, we're talking about we're seeing more and more and more and more reels of crime, particularly in our inner cities, New York. Chicago, all over the country. Now, I've come up with suggestions, I thought to myself. I said, well, if why aren't black people in the black communities getting the same treatment as foreigners around the world who gets the opportunity to come to America and enjoy the milk and honey? Why aren't black residents in black neighborhoods moved to safer places. Okay? We just saw a situation where Afghanistan, the Taliban decided to take over. Whoever decided to take over their own area, their own country where they live. And as we saw in the videos, there were hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of Afghan Residents, men, women, and children, who decided to flee Afghanistan under the guise of being a refugee and they're leaving a war zone. So this is how you know how diabolical America is. So it's okay for shooting, rapes, murders, robberies to go on in black neighborhoods and there's no kind of asylum for the residents there, the poor people. Why aren't these poor people lifted up out of these war zones and put in good places, reestablished, uh, re-educated, so they can get better jobs to support their families and live somewhere where there's no crime, where there's no shooting, where there's no deaths going on? But if you noticed, all around the world, Everyone has a reason to leave their country and come here and get these benefits. Somehow, they have the right to come to America, go to school for free, uh, get residence for free, get education, I said education, find a good job, get all the benefits they need until they get to that point, i.e. food, a place to stay, Electricity, water, all, all the utilities that black people need in black neighborhoods. So why isn't there a, a, a plan to take all the non-combatants out of these rough neighborhoods where the shooting and killing is going on and move them somewhere nice, somewhere in the middle of the country where they're not having these type of problems? But what I've noticed just, just in this past year, there are foreigners, people from other places that are able to come here. And, and guess what? I, I'm, I'm not trying to, to uh, down people for wanting to do better, for wanting to leave a bad situation for a better situation. Why, well, I'd probably be running too. Probably not if I, I'd be fighting. But I can understand. But the point is, is that black people in black neighborhoods have no place to run. While having all these geniuses like Larry Elder, Herschel Walker, and all these other black prominent figureheads credentialized by white supremacy, why haven't they spoken out? Why haven't they come up with this simple plan to move non-combatant black people out of rough neighborhoods giving them a better life in the Midwest somewhere or somewhere nice where no one else is living. Reestablish them. Reeducate them. 
so that they can live a better life and get actually get off of welfare. Because believe it or not, there are a lot of foreigners here. There are about 12 million black people. About 12 million. There's been millions of foreigners that's been coming here over the years. And they all have been receiving uh, the red carpet. They get checks. They get food. They get a place to stay. They get a clean playground for their kids to play. They get health care. And you see this while you see black people with no place to go. Walking up and down the street. Why many of this is happening in the same neighborhoods where blacks live. Okay. So I have to ask myself, why aren't our mayors, our governors, if they really, really care? Because black lives matter, by the way. All that money that, that went into uh, black lives matter that they collected for donations after donations. And you can't tell me they didn't get donations because I sit here and I play video games and all I see is black lives matter. So people have been donating to Black Lives Matter. Why hasn't Black Lives Matter put some money up to relocate black people that live in war zones? Let's think about it for a second. Our own president, the, 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 the national, um, I would say the national media, they all sympathized. They all sympathized with Afghanistan. They all sympathized with war zone countries and, and begged, pretty much begged to bring them here. To teach them the American way. Why hasn't this happened for black people in black neighborhoods? Now, we're talking about four or five hundred years now. Okay? We're talking about refugees that left the plantation. Why haven't they been relocated and reestablished? Let's think about it for a second. In Afghanistan, Afghanistan people are killing Afghanistan people. In Mexico, Mexican people are killing Mexican people. This is going on all up and down Central America. All over the world, wherever there are refugees trying to leave to come to America, their own people are killing their own people. So I don't want to hear this about black on black crime when you got white on white crime and there's more white people than there is black people. Okay, because that always seems to be, oh, black on black. Okay, let's fix it. Let's move non-combatants, those who want to live a better life. Let's move them out the city. And then, we, and then guess what? We all tool up and just take over the city. Take it back. Why aren't we doing that? But no, you leave non-combatants in the way of criminals and people that are killing every day. You won't remove them out the cities and the hoods. But you got a nerve to go over here in these other countries and put and pull them out and bring them over. All in the name of uh, their own people killing them. And then they come here, build businesses around where black people are in captivity, basically, because that's where they are. They can't move. They can't afford to move. And we all know this. So this is what's happening. They're hoping that all of the, the, the youth, the, black, the young black people turn into criminals. It's like a criminal factory. Don't put any jobs out there. Don't put any opportunities out there. Let's make the music so it's, a, so it's the theme to the criminal activity. Let's let the kids look up to the rappers who are walking around with their pants down, who are literally talking about committing murders, black murders. As long as they're talking about black people, and as long as they're, and as long as they're, 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 they're not talking about any other groups, LGBTQ or anything, you can't comment on that. But it's okay to call black people niggers to the point that everybody else says the word nigger. And, and this is how they're destroying us. Because, see, they don't move black people out of fucked up areas. 
They move everyone else out of fucked up areas and give them a, a opportunity to reroute themselves. I mean, isn't that why the uh, the Puritans left Europe? Because they wanted a better life. They wanted to get away from, from the same people that were oppressing them, so-called, right? And isn't this the reason? See, everybody gets that. Because they'll tell you, oh, this, you know, America is made of immigrants and America is made of... Yeah, they're made of people that were leaving fucked up situations to come and capitalize off black people. And that is what it is. Call it what you want. And there's some people going to say, oh, this is racist. No, these are facts. Because everybody gets to do what they want to do in America but black people. And the only black people that's going to pull out are the ones that you see, like the Larry Elders, who will tell you there's no systematic race. I'm just sitting here telling you this. I'm showing you where the racism is. Let's see, Larry Elder wants, wants, wants uh, the white people to believe that all the black people have the same opportunities that they have and that there's really no racism going on here. In fact, there's just black people killing black people as if he lives in a glass. And these are very educated people that have been credentialized by white supremacy. Jim Clyburn, uh, uh, Clarence Thomas, I mean, there's a fleet of them that you see on TV that sit there and say nothing because they don't care about black people. And they'll be the first one to tell you, shit, I, ain't, ain't a white man uh, shoot me. That, this is a nigga that's doing it. Yeah, look at these videos. You have videos that show, oh, yeah, see, look, um, yeah, they're shooting each other. They're doing, look, they, they, look, black people create videos showing their own shit in their pants, and then they then they turn it inside out, and they want to show it to the white community so they can get clicks and fucking donations and shit. Instead of having a sensible mind to say, hey, what is happening to my people? See, there's too many individuals that get to speak. People that care about their personalized lives, and, and you, want, you, know, you want to be a politician for the people, but you have nothing to say for the people. Because you're going to say, well, I'm a representative for all Americans. I'm the president for all Americans. While they're saying they're the president for their people, they're the representative for their people. And black people are the only people who get up there and say, yeah, we're everybody's candidate. Almost as if, if we say anything about us, they're going to say we're racist. Look at some of the stores. These stores come out actually say Chinese store, Afghan food. Uh, uh, get one that say African-American, Negroes, nigga, or some shit like that food, and they'll try to close it down and say it's racist. See? Have a store that says, uh, you know, the African-American uh, uh, grub, Grub ho. See, we, we, can't, we can't do that. First of all, they screwed us up by changing our name, calling us African Americans. At least when we had the word Negro, we knew who Negroes were. Everybody's not a Negro. Everybody's not an American Negro. And there's some people going around that they don't understand what that means. Because they're the ones out here committing crimes. Because the same niggas out here committing the crimes are the same ones that's telling you Man, you know, man, I don't get involved in that. They're the same ones that don't do anything for their communities. And I think our communities are tired of this, man. There are black men in these communities that are getting tired to the point where good men are going to start walking the streets armed. And known criminals, known criminals are going to get put down. I mean, when you look and you see this constantly, like, the person that's getting shot was not prepared. The person that's getting shot was not armed. The person that's getting shot was coming out of the store. Now, I'm not talking about people who are doing bad drug deals and people who owe other people money based on crime and the crime organization itself. Listen, they're going to they're gonna knock each other off. But the point I'm saying, we got innocent people here. We got kids. We got babies who have fathers and mothers who are tired of this. And once again, our government is not going to move good black people out 
of fucked up areas and, and resettle them somewhere so they can live a better life. And so when you look at our elections, you see there are candidates there that we didn't pick. We have candidates that, does, that don't even have the same ideals, that have no tangibles for black people. So these are all figureheads. They're just put up there to toe the line and to be a black face and talk about things like climate control, talk about things like uh, um, beef, you know, just just anomaly of shit that have nothing to do with getting black people back on track. I'm not even going to say it back on track because we've never been on track since we left the plantation. We've never been given the proper financial plan to overcome a people that's went through slavery. The black codes, black laws, right all right, right all the way up to what now? So what they do is they fill the theater with a bunch of people that don't know better, that's getting good treatment. And guess what they're not going to do? They're not going to worry about your issues because they're getting good treatment. They're going to keep their mouth shut and they're going to take the check while we get no check. See, everybody get a check. Everybody gets a lift. But black people, this is why you still see black people in neighborhoods that have decayed to crime. But not one politician, black or white, ever thought, hey, let's just move them out of there, relocate these people, re-educate these people, and let's make sure they can find a good job, and let's keep paying them until they find a job. Because you don't see, you very seldom see, or I don't know, but you don't see foreigners walking the streets with no place to go. They all have businesses, money in their pocket, and they have something to do. They have been given the opportunity to succeed in the United States of America. While black people have to fight crime and fight white supremacy. Let's think about it for a second. Ice Cube came up with a plan. A plan that he felt that could help black people in America. And he wanted to talk to the president. Okay, the president's been in office since January. We're now in what? Uh, September? Has Ice Cube talked to the president yet? No, because it's all a sham. Even Trump tried to sat, sat down and, and at least heard, uh, I mean, his administration sat down and at least heard what Ice Cube had to say. So what does this tell you? It tells you we no longer need to vote for this establishment that does not support black people. But we have been fragmented with so many different cultures and so many uh, different um, dark-skinned people from the diaspora that all they care about is the pat on the back. And I'm honestly going to tell you, I believe in the next two years, there will be vigilantes. It will be the year of the vigilante. There will be a purge of the criminal activity in black neighborhoods. There have been enough enough family members who have died, enough family members who have been killed to where they're tired of it. Black people are beginning to walk the streets armed. And I believe in the next two years, there will be a purge of known criminals. Known, known criminals that repeat crimes in certain neighborhoods. And, and, I, and hey, listen, I'm... This is what's going on right now in black. Every day when you look at the news, you hear little boy been shot, little girl been shot. While mothers are twerking and not saying anything, this is what's going on. The education level has dropped. There's nothing for the young people to do. And so I feel like the criminal's about to fall off. I think the black neighborhood is about to be fed up. Well, I don't want to go too long with this one, but I need to make a comparison between how everyone else is treated versus black people who have participated over 500 years. So I want to thank you. Please like and please share.
This is Black Views, bringing you the Black News.